in addition to the trends that occur within the marketplace, creating opportunities, as we've discussed, the market itself for a given product or service also has dynamics. It's called the market growth curve or the market, the, uh, the marketing demand curve and how demand changes over time for a product. How the characteristics of a product, of the marketplace, and the dynamics for purchasing of a product or service changes over time. <clears throat> you can see in this chart that early on there's a relatively slow adoption of a new product. That's um, this part way to the far left of the, um, of the curve here. Let's see, we could get an arrow. This the area down here, relatively slow adoption at first. Interestingly enough, also during that time frame, the customers like to work with you. They understand you're new and it's a startup and they recognize also this creative destruction going on and they see that happening. And so they're working with you and you're making mistakes and you're kind of laughing it off together and working to solve the problem. And sometimes, in fact, during that phase of a company, the partnership with a customer is one of the most important assets that you have or with a few of your customers. And then there's that process that occurs at the beginning. Also, importantly, those customers, they want to be doing the latest thing. They want to be trying things out. They are early adopters. They're generally not all that price sensitive. This is important to note. You don't have to go in with the lowest prices if you have something new and different that people want to try and see if it improves their company or their lives. So you want to keep that in mind as well. The curve at the bottom here in the light yellow, this is the, cum this is the uh, activity at a given point in time and how much the market is. The overall bell-shaped curve, if you will. Early adopters, very few people buy the product over here. Lots of people are buying it in the middle, but over time, once everybody pretty much has it, it drops off again. And so you have this bell-shaped curve. Well, that same curve, when you look at it, is accumulated sales, there's this S-curve that you see here. And so early on, as we were saying, there's this idea that the market is growing relatively slowly, but then it accelerates and accelerates faster. But there is a point, this inflection point, where that acceleration actually slows down. The point right on the side of the hill here, where that curve starts to slow down, that acceleration. And that, around that point, and we'll talk a little bit more about this at a later stage when we talk about the individual dynamics um, for products and for growth going forward. This is where it's called crossing the chasm. A man named Jeff Moore writes about this, where all of a sudden, once the market has, most people have a product like an iPod, people start shopping around for alternatives that might be a better value for price or whatever. They look for generics and the like. So there is a point where the marketplace changes in its dynamics, and it becomes more of a value purchase. People don't want to buy you, like Apple, because you're the latest. They just want to buy the particular function or functionality that you're delivering, you know, like a pair of tennis shoes or whatever. Um, they don't necessarily want the latest and the greatest. And that's when a different dynamic occurs, and the business has to start becoming more efficient or efficiency-oriented, more price-oriented. Growing, coming up with a different kind of demand. And as you can see, as the cumulative adopters move up to scale, the actual dynamics of the business change. Why is this important for entrepreneurs? For entrepreneurs, we want to understand where we fit in this curve. If the marketplace is new, there aren't a lot of competitors. People are willing to work with us. They're willing to have some problems with their original product. They're not very price sensitive. Um, and essentially, a lot of people are in there, a lot of people are working with new players, and everything is grand, and there's not actually that much competition. The competition is, or the, the challenge is creating awareness in the customers that this new, uh, new idea, this new technology, this new approach, this new process will help them in some way. That's the challenge, education. When you get up the curve, the challenge becomes competition with, with players, and that's when incumbents have advantages. A big company like Walmart 
can bring in a product. You can have a boutique product like some fishing goods that are quite good, you know, for fly fishing or something, a very specialized market. You have some new things, maybe an electronic thing that can go into water and look at the fish or something like that. Um, and you're starting there. No one else has it. It's all wonderful. You're way down here. But after people start buying it, Walmart starts stocking a competitive product, one that they have made in China that has most of the features of yours, but it's a lot cheaper. And people go to Walmart to buy it. And that's when you start to have the challenge of incumbency. They have all of these other, other complementary assets, like all these stores out there. They have a brand. They have advertising. They send out flyers. They can put their products on special for an afternoon, you know, those sorts of things that cause grief to the startup, and that's when it starts getting difficult. So in our next lecture, we're going to talk about the advantages or the kinds of situations that favor us as startups and the kind of situations that favor the big guys, whether it's General Motors, whether it's a big electric company, whether it's Apple or Dell, the big companies versus the time it favors startups, like creating new applications or new video games or new independent music. So that's what we'll talk about, the difference between conditions that favor a startup like us and conditions that favor the guys that are already there, in which case we'll be beating our head against the wall if we go into those markets. So that's what we'll talk about next.